In today's video, I'm going to show you how to plant blueberries that you can get in the greenery in two super easy ways. But depending on which one we use, we're going to get more seeds to germinate than the other way. Although in both cases the plants will thrive, we have to keep in mind that the fewer competitors the seed has when it sprouts, the more plants we're going to get. And with both methods, I always recommend that you find the largest blueberry you can find in the tray to plant them. They're usually large, but since we're going to take all this kind to take the seeds, plant them, and make these little plants grow, we're going to select the best ones. I'm going to leave these four to do the planting method with the slice, because we're going to need more space, since in this case we're going to have competition for microorganisms, which are mainly fungi, which are going to be computing with the seeds. On the other hand, with these I'm going to do the second method of total extraction of the pulp and juices to keep away the seeds. I'll separate this here and we're going to use the method that worked best for me for the entire germination of these blueberries. I'm adding enough water until I'm about halfway through the container, because the idea now is to pulse like this and pad releasing it, because there are I'm going to break up the poles and release the seeds. Let it sit for a while so that the heavier seeds go to the bottom and we're going to start extracting all this juice that started to form. As in the case of the strawberry, we're going to find part of the pulp down there and look at all the seeds back there. I'm adding more water so that everything moves well and always with good movement we're going to remove the pulp that's floating. Some seeds went over, but we can rescue them later and look what we find at the bottom and we're going to separate any remaining fault from the seeds because this is where the sugars that the fungi are looking for to grow are located and they're going to compute a lot when the blueberry seeds germinate. And now all the seeds are at the bottom, ready for us to sow. But first, I recommend that you leave them on a paper towel so that you can finish separating all the remaining fault. If you can't sow them the same day but you take out the seeds, once they're dry and clean, you can store them in the paper towel for about a month. But I always recommend that you sow them as soon as possible because they're very small seeds. I'm going to let them dry and we're going to look at another method for planting. To plant the slices, cut them in half like this very slowly so as not to cut any of the seeds. I don't recommend doing this method because there will be a lot of hidden seeds on this side that will have a hard time computing with the fungus. So, this way we're going to give them more surface area so they can come out and when we have no more competitors, they'll start to germinate. Although it's a much easier method because we're only going to have to cut the blueberry, the problem we're going to have is that after planting, since we're leaving all the sugary pulp, this is going to cause fungus to grow, which I'm going to show you in a little while, so you're aware of it and don't get scared if you see it growing. I already have the material to plant. On the one hand, the seed is completely clean and there's no pulp. On the other hand, the slices that we are also going to be planting. I am going to use two containers with lids so that I can leave them closed to maintain humidity. As a substrate, I am going to recommend some compost that, if it has organic matter, will be much better. The important thing is that it is very loose, because this way we are going to be achieving better aeration. Because, when the plants begin to germinate, the roots are very small and we are going to need them to be able to extract nutrients and humidity from the soil in the best way possible. And I am going to fill them to approximately 2 or 3 centimeters in height to give space for the plant to develop once it has germinated. Note that it is loose and this is very important. And once I reach the measurement, I am going to barely press with the spoon. And the idea is that it is very uniform, but it has to be a light pressure. We do not want to leave a very compact soil because these roots will have a hard time entering the substrate. I already have the two trays ready. The only thing left to do now is to water them before planting. I recommend that you do this with a very light rain. The idea is to get no more than one centimeter wet, but to keep the substrate underneath completely moist as before you put them in the trays. And since they're going to be in a closed container, 
this water will evaporate and condense and fall back down. This way we can ensure a good level of humidity throughout the germination process. First, we're going to sew the slices and we're going to make a few holes in the substrate so that they're well placed and we're going to place them like this so that they're level with the substrate. And as they are, you have two options. Either you leave them like this, which gave me the best results, or if not, you can cover them with a very thin layer of soil. On the other hand, I have all the dry seeds without the pulp. And to sow them directly, we are going to spread them out on the substrate like this. And if you want to go a little further, note that there are different sizes of seeds and you can separate the largest ones in one container and leave the rest in another so that you are making a selection of your plants from the beginning. And once we sow them, I am going to support them directly with my finger and we are not going to add any substrate so that the seed comes into contact and begins to moisten. And now I have both methods working. On the one hand, the seed without pulp and on the other hand, we have the slices with the seeds so that they begin to germinate. We are going to take the two trays to a well-lit and warm place inside the house, because when they begin to germinate, we are going to want them to get as much light as possible to speed up this entire growth process until we have the plants ready to transplant. And the advantage we will have when we sow directly without the pulp is that in this case, the seed will begin to germinate without any competition and growth will accelerate much more. That is why in this case, and this is a tray that I made from the seed without the pulp, we managed to have much larger plants and a greater number of plants. Because when we sow with the pulp, all the fruit that is left without the seed is a source of food because it will not only have a good amount of sugar, but it will also provide extra moisture so that the fungi can begin to grow. You will see that as time goes by, the slices start to disappear all the white pulp that we have starts to turn an increasingly darker color until we start to see the growth of fungi. And this is the problem because many of the seeds will die and we will see that much fewer seeds germinate. This originated from slices and compares when we sow only with the seeds. That's why I'm going to recommend that you plant directly with the seeds without the pulp so that you can have a much greater number of blueberry plants in your home. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Share it with your friends, and very soon we'll see you in another video with much more botanical biology, and today applied to these two ways of planting blueberries. And this one I have here is a plant that is already two years old. I made it from seed and now I'm doing all the induction from the base so that it has more branches and this will mean much more production than we will have in tomorrow's blueberry plants. I send you a big greeting and I hope you have a nice day. Bye!